Hello and welcome to Secrets Mystery Manor. I'm your host, Psychic Zelda Kelly. Warning, this podcast may contain sensitive material. It is intended for mature audiences only. Viewer and listening discretion is advised. Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming to Secrets Mystery Manor. I'm Zelda, and I cannot wait to bring you this story. This story happened to me when I was four years old, and it was something that I'm not even so sure I've seen since, but I've heard a lot of people have experiences with it, and it's something that scared me and impacted me, well, for the rest of my life. And I've told this story before, but I think you deserve to hear it. Because after all, you like scary stuff. That's why you're here, right? Well, it certainly was scary. And I can tell you, back in 1964, I was four years old. So I just gave you my age. Congratulations, right? (laughs) So I was four years old. We lived in this sweet little, beautiful little white house. Mom, dad, sister, and myself. My sister is about 18 months older than I am. So she and I shared a room. Mom and dad obviously had a room. There was a bathroom, a little living room, kitchen, and a little dining area. It was just a sweet little home. And we were a young family, and it was, it was just beautiful, a beautiful time. Well, my grandparents would travel, and they would go different places. And one time, they brought us back these beautiful, beautiful bride dolls. And they looked different. It was definitely not a doll that you would play with or want, you know, not for a four-year-old. It was one of those little play pretties, you know, that you put on the shelf, that your mom puts on the shelf for, you know, further, for for further viewing, but you couldn't touch her. That's what they were. And this was the first time I had ever had a doll. I think I had had like stuffed animals or things like that. But this is the first time a doll was ever given to me. So the grandparents gave them to us, and they were beautiful. She was a big doll. They were big dolls. They both were, I would say, at least, I would say, maybe uh, 12-inch, 14-inch dolls. So they were, they were pretty tall dolls, for, especially because we were little. They seemed larger, and I know that they were. So... My dad built these shelves, and and it was just these plain shelves, but they looked like a box. They were really kind of cool. And I had mine for years after that. And they mounted these shelves on the wall toward the foot of our bed. So when we laid in bed at night, we could look on that wall in front of us and see all of these really, really cool things that we had. And on my shelf, I had a cup with an elephant. He was just really sweet. And my doll, obviously. A few other little things that were better toys, better things. My sister had the same. And we, now I've got to say this, we were not anywhere near a highway, a road, or anything. There were no lights that came in. When people were coming in and out, none of this. We lived in the suburbs in a little subdivision. There was no one behind us in the subdivision. And the homes were, oh, I would say fairly, uh, fairly far apart. They, They weren't really close. So my doll, my doll had short, beautiful, kind of a brownish, light brown hair. It was curled like a roll set. It was curled and she looked just gorgeous. 
had red lipstick on. Always loved that red lipstick thing. <laughs> and she had little pearl earrings. She had beautiful lashes. Her eyes moved. And so when you when you held her back, her eyes closed. When you held her, when you put her to the, you know, she stood up, her eyes were open. She had beautiful eyelashes. She had a little pearl necklace, a pearl matching bracelet, and of course, she had a pearl little ring on her finger. And her dress was white and lacy, and she had these beautiful little white shoes that had this little high heel toward them or to them and it they were just so sweet and adorable and then she had a veil it was a short veil but it was very very pretty and this dress was gorgeous now I, I've never seen anything like that so when I had this doll I couldn't believe it I stared at this doll constantly so the doll was put on the shelf. The doll was there many, many nights. And before I would go to sleep at night, I would look at her and I would say, I love you. You are just so pretty. I hope someday I can grow up and wear a dress like yours. I hope someday I have pearls like yours. I love your shoes. Thank you for being my friend. All these things that a little girl that's four years old would say to a doll. So this went on night after night. And there was just a very, very faint light that came from the hallway because my mom always had night lights in case we had to get up and get a drink or go use the bathroom or whatever the case may be. And I wasn't scared of the dark. We weren't scared of the dark. We didn't know that. We did not know fear at that time. There was nothing that we had been exposed to. Night after night, I'm looking at this doll. One night, I don't know why it was this one particular night. I don't even know what day of the week it was. I was looking at this doll, going through my normal mantra of how beautiful I thought she was and how I loved her. Suddenly, that doll turned and she looked at me and winked. And you can hear my kitty. And that when that doll winked, I felt myself gasp for breath. I never knew I never thought that would happen. I mean, who would? That's just not normal. And I knew at four that was not normal. And let me just say this for a minute. This was at a time that I was realizing that I was different, that I was experiencing psychic phenomenon. I was experiencing empath. And I knew that my mom and my grandma understood this because they were psychic and, and, and were empaths and clairvoyant. But I knew that there was something different there. And also, this was a time frame when a lot of things were ex that I was experiencing. And if you go back to the previous uh Mystery Manor, high heels, you're going to hear of another situation in which, and it happened after this, this particular situation. So that is also very interesting and happened that same year. Two very traumatic situations for me when I was four. So back to the story. I didn't in a blink of an eye, I was laying there watching, and she did not go back to the, her regular stance. She stayed in that position. And all of a sudden, I had realized and felt fear well up in the inside of me. And I remember opening my mouth to yell for mom, but nothing came out. And I was 
having this imagination of that doll jumping down on my bed. So believe me, there, there was a huge fear factor there. And all of a sudden, I felt myself perspiring. My hair was wet. My face was wet. And then I opened my mouth and out came this blood-curdling scream. This scream I never even knew that I could, I could manage or muster. The scream that I never, I don't think, ever happened again. And that was so loud, and I was so hysterical that my sister woke up and came over and said, What's going on? What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? And my mother and dad, I heard my mother get up. They came rushing into the room, and I latched onto my mother's neck, and I could not breathe. I could not tell her what was going on, and I just kept pointing at the doll, and mom and dad took me out in the living room, and Kathy, my sister, went out as well. So we were sitting in the living room. Mom was also frantic because Nobody knew what was happening, and I couldn't talk. So my mother, and this was like 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning, something like that. My mother calls my grandparents. My grandparents lived, oh, not very far from us at all. Maybe five miles, something like that. She calls, and I hear her on the phone, and I'm still hysterical in the background. And I hear her say, Mom. You and Dad have to come over immediately. And I heard her say, no, she's not hurt. It's Zell. She's not hurt, but you got to come. I don't know what to do. Well, within a flash, my grandparents were there because we were, we girls, my sister and I, were everything to them. They were there in a flash. So... My grandpa's standing there. He looks like he's just getting ready to jump into an arena and fight someone. And my dad is standing there <laughs> feeling the same way. And and finally, I the lights were on and I calmed down enough to sit there and be able to tell in my broken ability that the doll winked at me. Now, at first... My dad was like, oh, geez, this, you know, this was a dream. And I said, I was not dreaming. I was not. My mom went into my bedroom, our bedroom, came back out, and she said the doll was not in the same position as what she had set it on the shelves. Hi everyone, this is your friend Zelda Kelly, and I would like to take a minute to invite you to stop over to Psychic Secrets. That's www.psychicsecrets.com. There you can find an advisor that can help you with advice, direction, and guidance that you need. And also you can read our blog, which has a lot of really, really good little articles and information and can actually answer some questions for you. You can find us here on this same site, this Secrets Mystery Manor. We are there. Huh. So you're there already if you found us. But we also have another section, which is the Secrets Laws of Attraction. We have some wonderful videos up, and we would love to have you stop by and take a look at that. Now, I want you to know that Secrets really is here for helping the person. We have qualified, experienced advisors on call 24-7. We have the ability to chat. We have the ability to take a call and actually even a video call if you feel so inclined. So stop on by to PsychicSecrets.com. That's www.PsychicSecrets. That's two S's in the middle now. PsychicSecrets.com. And... Take advantage of our first-time offer. For those of you who have never called before, first-time customer, we have an offering of 30 minutes for $30.
You know, we can get a lot accomplished in 30 minutes. I'm so glad that you stopped by today to listen to Secrets Mystery Manor. And I hope you take the invitation to come on over and check out our advisors. We're here for you. So thank you so much. And hopefully I'll see you soon and you'll see me on there. I'm Extension 11. So back to our podcast. Bye for now. So at this point, I could see my mom's eyes were wide, my grandmother's eyes were wide, and my dad was no longer in disbelief. He didn't want to believe it. My grandpa tried not to show that he was concerned. But of course, there was a question about what had happened because obviously there was no way that I could climb up, zero way that I could climb up on these shelves and actually grab that doll, turn that doll without myself falling, or my sister would have definitely seen me and would have yelled and got me in trouble. <laughs> so that that was not happening. So as time went on during that night, it was decided that my sister and I would go spend a few days with Grandma and Grandpa. But not before that doll was removed. So grandma, or so Grandpa and my dad decided to go get the doll. Now, my Grandpa had gloves, my dad had gloves, and they decided to wear gloves, go get the doll, wrap it up, and let me see them take it outside. And what they did was our garbage can was out near the street um, for the garbage man to come that next morning. And so he was, it was almost like a little ritual where they took the doll outside and I had to watch out that window. I remember on my knees looking out the back of the couch, out the window, watching Grandpa and Dad lift the lid off of that garbage can. You can imagine that. You've all seen those garbage cans. And that lid was kind of tight on there because, you know, the garbage cans kind of get a little wonky. They get they get out of round and, and they're hard to fit on there. So they, they had to pull it off of there. So they pulled it off and they put the doll in there. Now, my dad had newspapers they put on top of the doll, and the doll had been wrapped up. So he put the lid on, and the lid was tight on that, on that garbage can. So at that point, it was okay. And so Mom packed us a, a bag, and we decided to go on down to Grandma and Grandpa's. And of course, my sister and I sat in the front seat. I know, I know, no seat belts, no car seats. Uh, Okay, that's what happened back then. Sorry, but we made it through. (laughs) I know a lot of you that are listening to this, you can relate. We We all made it till now. Thank God. But we sat, and I sat near my grandma, And Grandma had her arm around me, and I was tired and exhausted from just this whole ordeal. Well, it's my understanding that during this time, while we were gone, my my mom and my dad were having these big discussions about how my dad felt that I needed to go to the hospital, that he thought something was mentally wrong with me. And my mom, and of course, knew uh, what was going on. And of course, there was this absolute no, that was not going to happen. Well, the next day, well, let me get I got ahead of myself. So we went back to my grandma and grandfather's. And by this time, you could see, you know, it was starting to get morning. You could, you could tell that the world was starting to wake up, my world anyway, 
And so we got back, and Grandma fixed us a breakfast, and we had a little bite to eat, as what she would say. And she, we, we, she tucked us into our beds, and we went to sleep. The next day, my mom and dad came over, and my dad expressed some concern about me and that he thought maybe that I should go away for a little bit because there were things that were happening that I was seeing and there were things that I don't remember. Um, But there were things that I do, like a woman showing up in the hardware store and calling me by my name, talking to me, and that that that's another that's another one i'm not even going to tell that story that's another one so stay tuned that's the woman in the hardware store that was a very frightening thing so all of this was happening about the time that i was three and a half, four, five years old and so dad was very concerned he thought something was funky going on and so my grandparents and my mom they wouldn't have it. Absolutely not. Wasn't going to happen. Nobody was going to send me away. And I, of course, I was scared to death. Not only did I have this situation with my family, but now I'm hearing that my dad wants me to go away. I didn't understand. And I was little. All I knew is I was scared. So things finally calmed down. And when we went back home, of course the doll was gone, and my sister's doll was gone too. They had already said that if we got rid of one, we had to get rid of the other, and my sister agreed, because I think she was a little bothered by that. So I could not deal with dolls. There was a picture uh, before they got rid of her doll of my sister and I standing together, because at that point, I had to play with something that was not even remotely going to move or wink at me or whatever the case may be. I couldn't play with stuffed animals that had eyes. That I couldn't, I could, nothing like that. So I had to have something that was very, very generic. And this one picture that was taken of my sister and I standing together, she was actually holding her bride doll by the arm on this, like down by the side of her. And in the picture, you could see the horror in my face because I couldn't look at the camera. I was looking at the doll. I don't know what happened to that picture. I wish I still had it. I would put it here for you. But now they had decided to get rid of the doll and that the other doll for my sister that was the reason why i was so frightened that i lived a frightened really time and then we went to our grandparents again so listen to that last one high heels okay so getting back to this story as time went on i noticed that when i came home we, when we came home, Mom and Dad acted a little funny. They didn't say much. They just acted a little funny. And that was it. And as time went on, I was able to forget about it to a certain extent. I was able to make sure that, you know, I was distracted. I never played in the bedroom by myself. And we literally ended up moving to another house. So in the same neighborhood, so I could overcome not being so frightened to be in that room and having so much of memories and everything else that was going on. So later in years, Grandma, Mom, and I are sitting around. Of course, we're talking about times that went by and everything else. And we started talking about the doll. What I didn't know was that that morning when Dad and Grandpa put the doll in the garbage can, that later on my dad went out to work. He left at 5 o'clock in the morning or 5.30 in the morning to be at work at 6. 
he checked the garbage can, and the doll was not there. Now, there was no one around to see this going on. The garbage men, evident, obviously, didn't come by yet because the garbage was still there. The papers were there. Dag dug down into the, into the garbage can to see where it was, and it was not there. The lid was on tightly. The, so it, it was definitely a mystery. And to this day, nobody knew what happened to that doll. My mom and dad were very nervous about that, and that's why we moved as well. We didn't know. Could somebody have been lurking around the house? I don't think so. It was a very sweet, sleepy little town, and nobody was ever around. And when you see somebody take something out to the garbage that's wrapped up and, you know, you've got papers and everything else, I mean, you don't think too much about it. You're taking the garbage out, and that's the way they made it look. And they put the doll in underneath some more papers and garbage and everything else so it wouldn't fall out or be taken by somebody with the garbage collectors. They were amazed that I didn't know that. And I did not have any way of knowing that at all. And I guess it really bothered my dad and my grandpa. And it's a mystery. So I, I don't know to this day what happened to it. I never will know until one day I leave this plane. But I don't know. I, that, that has always created a mystery. And I can tell you that even now sharing this story with you, I feel that's right. I feel that anxiety that I felt so many years ago in that sweet little house and that sweet little bedroom about the doll. I don't know. Comment below where you think the doll went or if she actually went on herself. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Secrets Mystery Manor. I really appreciate you, and you be well. Don't be too scared. <laughs> and thank you, Psychic Secrets, for actually bringing this to us. We appreciate you so much. I will see you again in the next episode of Mystery Manor. You be well and take care. Bye for now. Until next time, thanks so much for listening. I just love this. Don't you?